Hi, this is Herb Shapiro with the Dr. Vax channel. And today, we're going to talk about a phenomena in 3D printing called ghosting or ringing. The effect is that when you look at a print, there are shadows of various lines you see or features you see in the print in the material next to that feature. We'll show you some examples, we'll explain why this happens, and we'll talk about a potential improvement to an Ender 5 to reduce ringing or ghosts. So stay tuned and let's learn something together. I'm surrounded by a bunch of stuff today. I have my heavily modified Ender 5. This Ender 5 has a CME CNC extruder that's over here. It has a Micro Swiss all metal hot end. It has Capricorn tubing. It has a Matter Hackers layer lock build plate instead of the standard build plate. So it's been modified a fair amount and it even has a auto bed leveling sensor on it, the Easy ABL auto bed leveling sensor. In order to support the Easy ABL auto bed leveling sensor, I updated the firmware in this printer, in this 3D printer. But you always want to make things better. So this printer produces beautiful prints. Let's look as an example at this print here and you'll see the word ghosting on here and you'll see that it's really rather clear and you'll see the vertical bar and there's a little bit of a shadow if you turn this in the right angle next to that vertical bar. However, if you look at this print, you'll see how much more pronounced that ghosting or shadow is. So we'll talk about what produced that shadow and how to eliminate it and why you only see that shadow in certain directions. So let's first talk about the concepts. You have a 3D printer. You have a print head moving back and forth. When it moves back and forth, at some point it has to stop. When it stops and starts moving in the other direction, the rest of the frame of that printer, now on the Ender 5, the frame is very rigid because it's a full box frame. The rest of the frame on that printer might vibrate a bit. Then it goes to the other side, it might vibrate a little more. Now, in essence, sometimes those vibrations will cancel each other out, but in other times, your printer will be vibrating very slightly in different directions as you're printing. Those micro vibrations cause ghosting or ringing. That's the phenomena where once again, if you look at the letters on here, you'll see there's sort of a shadow alongside the letters. Now I know this is difficult to see on the screen, but in person you'd see it. Now, if this was a less rigid printer, that ghosting would be very pronounced. It could be so pronounced that you couldn't see the letters at all. Just to show you the comparison, Here's a print where there's much less ghosting, and you'll see how much clearer those letters are. Now, how do you eliminate ghosting? Well, you can make your printer more rigid. The Ender 5 is already relatively rigid, but you also have to consider all of the other things that make up the print environment. I have this printer on this inexpensive table that I literally bought at a big box retail store and assembled, it shakes a lot. If I was to put this printer on the floor of my basement here, which is concrete, I'd get less ringing. If I happen to have a pool table in my house with a slate, heavy slate top, I would get less ringing. Well, how else can you eliminate ringing? You can print slower because the more rapidly that print head is moving back and forth, the more vibration you will see in your printer. But you also can fine tune the movements of your print head. And that's where the acceleration and jerk controls come into play. So let's look at this picture now on the screen. If you look at it from the bottom to the top, look first at the purple line. You start moving your print head. It has to accelerate 
up to the speed that you've told it to print at. It then moves at a steady state at that speed, then it has to decelerate or stop. The more rapid that deceleration, the more rigging you'll get. When you then go to start up again, the more rapidly you move to full speed, the more vibration you'll get. So by fine tuning the acceleration and jerk control values, you can also make your printer print with higher quality and less ringing. Now, if we look at this print here, the print where there's very little ringing, there is a little bit, but it's really pretty darn good. This was printed at 40 millimeters per second. This print where the ringing is much more pronounced was printed at 80 millimeters per second with the acceleration and jerk controls in the slicer turned off. Now, what else can you do? Let's say you want to print fast and you don't want any ghosting. Well, you can do things to make your printer more rigid. So I've done two things on this Ender 5. I have this little 3D printed accessory on the back that's holding the Z-axis. Now, some people think this is a terrible idea because if you have a rod that's connected at two points, it will rotate properly all the time. If you attempt to connect it at three points, there's going to be tension on that rod. So this is actually set relatively loose. There's a lot of movement here, but it does seem to buffer the vibration just a bit. I had that in place for all of the prints I made. But then on the Ender 5, people were concerned about this cantilevered print surface. On the new Ender 5 Plus, Ender 5 Pro, I always forget the new name, they actually have rods on both sides of the print surface to make it more stable. But in this case, this is cantilevered out, and so they're concerned about it vibrating like this. So how can you eliminate that? Well, you can put additional supports in place. Let's look at these supports. These are 3D printed supports. I did not print them on my Ender 5, though, because they wouldn't quite fit laying flat, which is the way I wanted to print them. I would have had to print them vertically, um, and then I would have had to use a raft and maybe supports. So in fact, I printed these on my Monoprice MP10, which is a much larger printer, and it has an advantage right now. My Monoprice MP10 has a one millimeter nozzle. That means it lays down much thicker layers. So I printed it with a one millimeter nozzle at a 0.4 millimeter layer height. So these are really thick layers. The end result is it's also prints fast and it's very strong and a little bit ugly. Because if you look at this print, you'll see the layer lines are rather pronounced. So you print out these four parts. You take the brackets on the back and you attach them together with screws. That's the bracket that you'll see right over here. And then you slide the, it over the platform on the front and it should add quite a bit of stability to this platform. So one of these prints was printed with it and one without, but to tell you the, the truth, I don't see the difference. So the question is, would I bother doing this? Probably not, it doesn't hurt. I'm not going to take them off, but it doesn't help. Now, ringing and vibration and ghosting is not always uniform. It happens differently on different axes of your printer, depending on where the vibration is. In fact, since the print pad on this printer is pretty solid, because it only moves up and down relatively slowly, you'll see something very interesting. If we look back at this test, this is a 3D printed cube, you'll see if we turn this right, you'll see alongside the Y, you see some ringing. Alongside the X, you also see some ringing. Now it's not terrible, but in the vertical axis, you'll see the print is beautiful. There is no ringing at all. So ringing or ghosting is a phenomena caused by vibration. You can reduce the vibration by printing at a lower speed. 
You can reduce the vibration by reinforcing your printer, putting it on a more solid surface. Once again, one of the easiest ways to get a little bit better prints is just put your printer on a concrete floor in your garage, in your basement, in your home, and it will vibrate less. You can also reduce printer vibration by fine tuning the acceleration and jerk control parameters in your slicer. What is the side effect? Just like printing slower, when you fine tune acceleration and jerk control, you're going to slow down your print. So the easiest, no headache way to get beautiful prints when you need beautiful prints is to print slower. With modern slicers, such as Prusa Slicer or Simplify 3D, it's relatively straightforward to set different spin print speeds for different layers. So I could print this area at a slower speed and this area where there's less likelihood of ghosting at a higher speed. Well, folks, I hope you learned something today. But before I sign off, I need to give a couple shout outs. The first shout out is to Angus at Maker's Muse. Angus and the Maker's Muse channel are a remarkable resource. I've learned a lot about 3D printing uh, from that channel. And these models are available on that channel. So if you go to Maker's Muse and you look at Angus's video about ghosting, you'll learn even more. The rest of these models that I showed you today come off of Thingiverse. I will link them down below, and that includes the brackets, the enhanced support brackets for the Ender 5. Those are available on Thingiverse. You can see a picture here of the site, and you can look those up and use them later. So remember, if you learn something and you have a question about it, or you have a comment or a suggestion, or I said something that's wrong, then feel free to leave a comment because by leaving comments, we will all learn together.